As you can probably guess, I am no longer in the USA. I'm back in Scotland now. We're taking a little bit of a break from the Arizona content. There's still more to come, but I wanted to talk to you today about 3D printing photographs. So this is something I've seen a lot in the 3D printing community over the last few months, but it's not something I see a lot of photographers doing. Perhaps photographers don't know about it. Perhaps photographers just don't have 3D printers. I don't know, but I thought I'd talk about it a little bit today. Lithophanes aren't like normal flat 2D prints where you print them out, stick them on a wall, throw a light on them and you can see them. They actually first started being produced in the early 1800s. Obviously they didn't have 3D printers back then, but they were being made a lot with porcelain. The way they work is you backlight them in order to see the image and the thinner the material, the lighter those parts are, the thicker the material, the darker those parts are. So you can vary the thickness of the material in order to create like a full contrast mono image. So I've printed a couple off here just as a bit of a test, but I want to walk you through the whole process of how to create these, what software to use, how to slice them, and then actually printing them. But we're going to start off on the Vivo Work Pro. We're going to take a look at the photo and see how we can convert 2D to 3D. So here we are on the Windows desktop, and this is the image that we're going to be printing out today in 3D. Now, obviously this isn't a 3D print in the sense that your subject is in the foreground and then your background is in the background and you get all real depth. This is purely based on the brightness and darkness of different parts of the image resulting in thinner and thicker parts of the final print so that you can see it when you put a light behind it. The first thing we need to do is to convert this into a 3D model. And the way we're gonna do that is use a web-based application called Image to Lithophane on a website called 3DP Rocks. And there'll be a link to this in the description below. And here you can see, we basically just have a flat-ish 3D cube. And we're going to drag our image into here. And there you can see it's brought it in in black and white and there it's converted it to 3D. Now we're gonna play with a few of the settings here because right off the bat, they're not perfect or at least not for what I need for a start the size is good we're gonna make it a little bit thicker just so it's a little bit more substantial I'll drag that up why is there we go four keep that at zero zero point eight four we're gonna give it a base though we're gonna bring this up to ten and then we're gonna go into we need to set this up as a positive image not a negative if you do it as a negative, then all of the light bits will be thicker and the dark bits will be uh, thinner, which is the opposite of what we want. So we need to tell it it's a positive image. And then when we go back to the model, we just tell it to refresh. And you can see there it's gone negative. Now you can see when we zoom in, the brighter bit with the subject is thinner and the darker bits are thicker. But you'll see now as well, we've also got a base on it, which makes it a little easier to help it stand up once we printed it. Some people, and there are a bunch of them on Thingiverse, so you can model your own, print these out and then put them into their own frames so you don't need the base. But you know, you might just want to stand it up, put it against a window or something. And then when the sun comes out, you can see the picture. But just for this, we're, we're going to stick a base on it. Once we've done this, we're, we're, that, this is literally it. We've converted it to 3D. Now we just need to download the file. With the file downloaded now, all we need to do is load the SnapMaker.js software. Okay, and once it's loaded, we just need to go into the 3D printing tab and drag it in. And we are gonna need to change a few of the settings around on here just to make things a little bit easier. But there you can see we have our lithophane imported and it's all the right orientation. And there, you can more easily see there how the thickness defines the depth. So like here's a little bit lighter than here, which is a little bit lighter than here. When you can see here where our subject is with her light dress, it's, it's much thinner than it is here where it's darker with the water and the forest in the background. So to print this out, we're gonna need to tweak a little bit of the settings. We don't have to, but it just ends up giving us a much better quality print. So we're going to go into customize. I'm going to create a new profile. I'm going to rename this and call it Lithophanes. Whoops. Okay. And then I'm going to expand all these. We won't need to change all of them, but I want you to see what they are. 
We're going to change the initial layer height down to 0 0.2 just so that it, it, it gets a little bit closer to the bed. I'm going to set the wall thickness to five millimeters. With the wall thickness set to five millimeters, you know, the front of this to the back of this is only 10 millimeters anyway. So it's basically going to be solid. And that's the key to printing lithophanes. You want them to be entirely solid. If you stick with the default wall width, um, you'll find that the back will be solid, then the front will be solid, but then it will be hollow in the middle, which will negate all of the properties of the lithophane that we're trying to bring out. The speeds are okay. Retraction on here isn't super, super vital, but what it will do is help to prevent little bits that might bobble up on the front surface or on the edges as it moves from one area to another to just fill in a little bit than it needs to. But then everything else is basically going to be the same. So that profile is now saved all we need to do if we want to make another one is click on customize and then pick it from the drop down and then all of these settings will be loaded back and with all the settings there all we need to do now is generate g-code all right so there you can see that our file has now sliced i do actually have the snap maker hooked up to the laptop over usb but i'm not going to tell it to print over usb I'm going to copy it out to the USB stick and do it that way. You can see down here at the bottom, it's going to take eight meters of filament weighing 23.8 grams. And it's going to take a little over two hours to actually print it. So we're going to export the G code and we're going to tell it to save on the Snapmaker USB stick. And you can see some of the other ones that I've already printed. And we're going to call this one Lake District dot G code because the Lake District is where I shot this photograph. With that done now, all we need to do is pull out the USB stick, plug it into the printer, turn it on and tell it to print. So here's our finished 3D printed lithophane and you can see it doesn't look much like a photograph yet, but it will do in a few minutes when we put a light behind it. There's a few things I want to mention though. For a start, one thing I didn't mention in the slicing software was that I printed this with a brim. This is a little bit of extra surrounding plastic that goes on the print bed just to give it a little bit more surface area to grip onto. With as much as the plate moves around when it's printing one of these, you need all the help you can get. The 3 dp Rocks software website was also running a little bit laggy, so a couple of the settings weren't quite what I thought they were. I was 3.3 millimeters thickness instead of four millimeters thickness, so the contrast isn't quite as high as I'd like. And also my time-lapse camera died partway through filming this, so unfortunately there was not time-lapse of this thing printing like I'd hoped there'd be. But I did shoot time-lapse for this one that was printing the other day, and this was the one you saw at the beginning of the video. This one turned out really, really good. There's a lot of contrast in this image with the white suit and the dark background. And then this was another one from the recent trip to Arizona with the cactuses in the desert. But you can see how the different levels of thickness within the image cause the bright and dark areas of the shot to show through and create that contrast. It's a fun little project. It's not something I'd done before printing these. You don't have to use a Snapmaker to print these. You can do them with just about any 3D printer. I use a Snapmaker because it's sitting on my desk right now and I had the software set up on the laptop. You can also make these in Cura, Slicer, Simplify 3D or whatever slicing software you prefer. You might just have to tweak the settings a little bit more to get decent results this quickly. With this, it was very, very little tweaking. This one was my second or third test of this picture and it turned out great, very, very quickly. If you've got some other kind of 3D printer kit or something else that uses a different slicer, you might have to tweak the settings a little bit more in order to get the best results. One thing you do have to be aware of is that generally you need to use white filament for these. I have seen people playing around with other colors and I've actually seen a few people who have painted the backs of the white prints so that when they shine the light through, it actually comes up in color. Obviously, it's not gonna be exactly the same colors as the original photograph, but you can paint some color in there with some filaments if you want to. Which paints will work best, whether or not you should prime it, you're on your own with that one because I haven't tried it. I don't need to try it, I might do at some point, but for right now, I'm just happy to create nice mono lithophanes. Now I think I'm done with my experimenting with these. I it, It's something, like I said, I'd not done before, but it's something I've always wanted to try and Snapmaker 
came with some white filament, so I thought I'd give it a go. Also, while we're talking about the Snapmaker, the Snapmaker 2 campaign launched today, and there'll be a link to the campaign page in the description below. For the record, I get no benefit whether you click it, don't click it, buy it, don't buy it. Doesn't affect me one way or the other, but a lot of people have been asking about it since I started posting about the Snapmaker. So if you want to find out more, there's a link in the description below. But that's it for now. The next video will probably be the Crane 2 versus Crane 3 Lab comparison video that a few people have been asking me about. So subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when that goes live. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.